Scientists claim they discovered 200 Goldilocks zones on the moon where astronauts could survive. Now this one is a pit, but uh, this is an ass image showing this pit, but there has been a rod placed above the uh, diameter of it from one end to the other. Now who put that rod there? <laughs> That's just another artifact of the moon's surface that we cannot explain. But going to this, the 200 balmy Goldilocks zones on the moon, scientists discovered pits on the moon that are room temperature in the shade. Now the thing is these pits, how are they made? Are they um, impacts, impact craters? Are they um, some kind of uh, subduction of the surface because of something happening there? We have to ask ourselves how these pits were made. Now, lunar scientists think they found the, the hottest places on the moon as well as some 200 Goldilocks zones that are always near the average temperature in San Francisco, they say. The moon has wild temperature fluctuations, with parts of the moon heating up to 260 degrees Fahrenheit or 127 degrees Celsius during the day and dropping to minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit, that's minus 173 degrees Celsius at night, which is freezing very, very bad. Uh, but the newly analyzed 200 shaded lunar pits are always 63 degrees Fahrenheit or 17 Celsius meaning they're perfect for humans to shelter from the extreme temperatures. They could also shield astronauts from the dangers of the solar wind, micrometeorites, and cosmic rays. Some of those pits may lead to similarly warm caves, they said. These partially shaded pits and dark caves could be ideal for a lunar base, scientists claim. Surviving the lunar night is incredibly difficult because it requires a lot of energy. But being in these pits and caves almost entirely removes that requirement, said Tyler Horvath, a doctoral student in planetary science at the University of California, Los Angeles, and lead author of the NASA-funded research published online July 8th in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. It's a revelation that it has been over a decade in the making. The first pit on the lunar surface was discovered 2009, by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's JAXA, Kayuga, formerly Salini for SEL, Le Elenological and Engineering Explorer, Orbiter. However, this new work has been done using a thermal camera, the Diviner Lunar Radiometer Experiment on NASA's Robotic Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO. Of the 200 pits discovered, two to three have overhangs that lead to a cave, while 16 appear to be skylights to collapsed lava tubes. On Earth, lava tubes are hollow cave, caves found close to the surface in volcanic regions, most notably Kazumura Cave in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and La Cueva de, del Viento on Tenerife in the Canary Islands. As the lava flowed, the top of it solidified while the lava continued to flow beneath it. In some places, the lava actually evacuates completely and leaves a lava tube, Horvath said. If a lava tube collapses, a pit is created that acts as a skylight to the long cavity. That same process happened billions of years ago when massive volcanic events on the moon created the famously dark lava fields on the lunar surface called Maria, which is Latin for seas. Horvath says these pits likely formed due to small impacts punching a hole in the lava tube's ceiling or seismic activity weakening the ceiling. In the new study, researchers analyzed the temperatures within a cylindrical pit about 328 feet or 100 meters deep in the Mare Tranquillitatis, the Sea of Tranquility, near the moon's equator. The team's findings revealed that while the pit's floor is illuminated at lunar noon, it's probably the hottest place on the entire surface of our natural satellite, at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, a nice cooking temperature of an oven. Meanwhile, temperatures within the permanently shadowed reaches of the pit fluctuate only slightly from Earth-like hoodie temperatures. The pit is relatively close to where two of NASA's Apollo missions landed. The Tranquilitatis Pit, the Sea of Tranquility Pit, 
is actually the same distance from Apollo 11 and Apollo 17 landing sites, about 375 kilometers away. Horvath said, and if we end up going there, it would be incredible to see the bookends of the Apollo program and how well it's been preserved. That's the possibility. The study was initially to help inform tentative plans for a moon diver mission proposed by NASA's Jet Propulsion, uh, Propulsion Laboratory in 2020, which would have a rover descend into the Tranquilitatis pit to explore any existing cave. This rover would be able to study the layers of lava flows in the pit walls that have been imaged by LRO, helping us better understand the moon's earlier history and evolution, Horvath said. There's not a whole lot left to study about these pits from orbit, but there's plenty of opportunity if we go to one directly. Apollo 11's Tranquility Base could yet get a subterranean sequel. This is by Live Science by Jamie Carter. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.